Is there a standard structure for television? Yeah, and and it can vary, especially depending on what your what outlet you're writing for. So when you're staffed, right, you're writing to whatever the network or the streaming service does. There's there's a variety of different structures that that brings about. For instance, most of the ABC dramas that I know of, I will not say all about any of them, are written in six act structure. So what six act structure means is that you're you're basically everything's kind of a little symmetrical, right? You've got this many pages here, this many pages in each act, get building to those act out through those commercial breaks, and because it's so act out driven it really changes the pacing of the show. If you watch, most ABC shows will feel like they move very quickly. And it's because of that sort of symmetrical nature of the acts. Shows on CBS are often teaser four is the structure. It's also often called five act structure. It sort of just depends on who's referring to it. But what it does is allow you to write a longer teaser that can sometimes be more luxurious and get more of your story set up. And then you, f you use the following four acts to, you know, complete your storytelling. Shows that I, I will say I think have done that are like The Good Wife, right? Would sometimes have those really long opening setups before the title card. So that's your long, luxurious teaser. And then the rest of the show is the five-act structure. Um, so those, that's sort of the main stuff. Six-act, teaser four, or five-act. Five-act tends to... Um, have a shorter teaser that then the basically starts act one. So it's like short teaser, title card, rest of act one, as opposed to being a separate entity like teaser four is. Um, so those are the varying sort of different things. And you can, you know, again, if you can get a hold of scripts for different shows, you can research how they did it. In streaming shows, when you read our scripts, there, there won't be any act designations because there are typically no commercial breaks. Although now that, you know, Netflix is going to have an ad tier, I don't know if that's going to change or they're going to ask us to tell them where the commercial breaks are like we do in broadcast TBD. But um, again, to something I spoke about earlier and that I think is really important, breaking the story as if those act breaks exist will help with your storytelling and help with the emotional ebb and flow of the episode so that it doesn't feel like you're waiting till the end of the show to do all the really important things. Because I think what happens is people are like, well, we can have all these nice long conversations or we can have this great big huge set piece, but then you're not really getting a lot of variation in the episode. It's just sort of like talk, 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 Everything happens or it's like talking, talking, huge set piece, talking, 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 boom, ending. And that's like a, it's not really a great pleasurable experience when you watch TV. You want to sort of like be drawn in and then like, okay, I can rest a little bit. Um, so that, that act break structure, even if you take act breaks out of your script is a really good way to do it. How is the structure of a Netflix 60 minute show different from a 60 minute cable TV show? The biggest difference is are, if you're referring to cable as in like freeform, FX, those kind of things, are that those platforms still include commercial breaks. So you are still writing to an act out. And what that really means for the writer is that you are creating a moment that you hope assures that your audience will come back after the commercial break. Now, obviously, some, those shows will move to a streaming platform. There will not be commercials in them. So you, that gets eliminated at that point. But when they're airing on their actual originating broadcasters, that's the whole goal. That's what an act out is all about is, holy crap, what just happened? And you're like, come on, commercials, come on, commercials, go, 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 go. Or you recorded it so you can fast forward through all the commercials and then your show is back. Um, so, you know... For a streaming show for, say, Netflix or for, you know, Amazon or for, free, well, Freebie has ads, but for Amazon Prime itself, those are not, they're not worried about your act breaks. So you can, you lose page count in your script to act breaks when you're doing them for, say, a broadcast show, like 
when you have four lines at the top of a page and then it's like end of act, you're done with that page. Like all that blank space is <laughs> lost to you. If you're doing a streaming show and you're breaking it with act breaks, but you're not putting them in the script, it's just one long continuous thing. So you've probably bought yourself back four pages of script just by not having act breaks. So it'll allow you to expand a little bit sometimes when you need to. Um, the trick with the 60 minute show, I have written yet to write on a Netflix show and I have written on three of them now where 60 minute episodes were actually what we were delivering. We've mostly still delivered like 52-ish, 50, 52 to 55 minutes. So in general, I know they have shows that will have longer episodes, but in general, that's still the target. So you're still looking at, you know, turning in a 52 to 55 page script in the hopes of not, you don't ever want to run short, but you also don't want to be 10 minutes over because now you're going to have to kill a lot of scenes that you love in order to get it down. <laughs> so trying to find that sweet spot of being like four or five minutes over so you can cut a few things, but you know, still have some choices and some, some good moments around is kind of the goal. Can you explain A, B, and C stories? Sure. So in most shows, you will have your A story is the main story of the episode. It is the driving story usually of your main characters. Uh, not always true, but often true. And so say for instance, and I'll use SWAT as an example, because we very clearly wrote A, B, and C stories. So your A story is the crime of the week, right? What are, who are the bad guys we're challenging? What have they done? What are we trying to stop them from doing? And you will develop that whole story. And who in our cast is that story really affecting right now? Eight out of 10 episodes, that's gonna be Hondo. But sometimes it's a personal case from the past for one of our other characters, or it's someone's friend who was injured in the crime. And so they're the ones who are emotionally affected by what we're doing. So that's your A story. Your B story and your C story are the supporting stories in the episode. And they are usually more character focused so it's a chance for your second tier characters to sort of get moments, right? So say, again, in an episode of SWAT, a B story might be um, Street and Chris have like admitted that they like each other, but they're still like, oh, can we date? No, we can't date. What are we gonna do about this mess? So that romantic intrigue is your B story. Sometimes it also will cross into your A story, right? Because it's like they're on a call together and they've just had this fight about the fact that they can't date each other, but then like something dangerous happens and then it's so clear that how much they love each other, right? So it's like you're building that stuff into the A story, but you're breaking their arc on its own. And then a C story is usually a runner, right? It's like a three, four beat story that sometimes adds some humor to the episode. Sometimes it's to tie off a loose end that we've left floating from a prior episode of like, did that couple break up? We don't know. And so we'll do like three beats where we finally reveal, like, did the couple break up? Oh, no, no, they're still together. Look at that surprise, like whatever it is. Um, sometimes it's a way to give an actor who has maybe not been as focused on in the show a chance to shine. So you're giving them three or four scenes that are really about them and their character and letting them sort of like, you know, hey, I'm here, pay attention to me. So that's really what those things break down to. It's your main story, your secondary story, and then C story is usually a runner. Um, you will sometimes, like in a finale episode, your B and C stories will feel about equal because you know finales are all about wrapping up the emotional arcs of the entire season. So sometimes it's like you've got three relationship st stories going and you have to get somewhere with all of them. So you'll, you know, you suss that out in the moment, but that's in general how that works. What do writers get wrong about TV structure? I think the imbalance can happen a lot. The everything happens in the beginning or the end and not enough attention to holding the story in the middle, right? You, you can start with a big bang, but you have to keep building investment through the episode or else people won't be around to see your big finish. So 
it's just that reminder of like the story has to keep building on itself. And sometimes you see people like just sort of think this story can coast and it, it can't like you need to keep building the investment of your audience of like, oh my God, she overheard that. Is she going to tell them she overheard it? You're waiting to find out like, is she going to tell them? And then maybe you don't even get an answer to that episode, but like I'm leaning forward now because I'm like, she overheard the thing though. She overheard the thing. So it's just that it's, I think that's the biggest mistake is not realizing that you can have a big beginning and a big finish, but if the stuff in between isn't piquing the interest of your audience, they're going to tune out. And that's the worst thing that can happen to you because they may not make it to your big finish. And so you can't count on that to be why someone's going to keep watching the show.